Hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we'll solve some mechanics problem from AITS. So let's start with the first problem. In a water park, there is a circular river in which the flow is at a speed u along a circular path. So this is the river that they're talking about. So firstly, the fluid flow is going to be constant speed and it's along a circular path, meaning it's it doesn't have a radial component of velocity. It is purely in the circumferential direction or in the theta cap direction in terms of the polar coordinates, right? Now we have a small toy boat that is steered radially with the speed v relative to to water okay so the guy if he is present at some location something like this relative to the river the direction in which he rows is going to be in this direction right so because this is the r cap direction or the radial direction so the guy wants to reach the diametrically opposite point b so he starts from over here which corresponds to theta equal to zero degree and he wants to reach the point b which is on the diametrically opposite point in half round and the reason for saying this is he could reach it in 1.5 rounds as well right so then the question is we have to find the time it takes for him to reach the point b so let's begin with the solution okay guys so so the guy starts from this particular point a over here and now guys so the guy we know he's uh, steering in the radial direction so now it'll depend on what direction we take the river velocity to be in so if i assume the river is flowing in this direction then the guy's motion will be something like this right and if i assume it in the other direction he will move in this particular direction so let's just say the river is flowing in this particular direction and at, ge at some general instant the guy is present over here which makes an angle of theta with the vertical okay so again we know that the man relative to water he steers in the radial direction with a speed of v so again uh, this is the r cap direction which is along the radius vector so the, so his relative speed will be in this direction and we know the fluid flow will be in the tangential direction or in the theta cap direction which is going to be perpendicular to this v vector and the fluid flow speed is u so now we can write down two particular equation for this guy's motion in polar coordinates so first let's define the distance of the boat from the center o as r okay so now we can write down two equations first is the rate at which the distance r is changing dr by dt this is simply v and there won't be any components of u along v right because u is perpendicular to v always so and the second equation is the rate of change of the angle theta which is simply the omega of this line op so and omega of the line op is going to be u divided by r right so this i can write it as u divided by r so now we don't know v as a function of t so i cannot integrate this expression and we also don't know r as some function of theta right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide these two expressions so i obtain dr by d theta equals v r divided by u this is an easily variable separable differential equation so i can write dr by r equals v by u times d theta so now i can integrate on both sides so so when theta was equal to zero the man's distance from the point o was r naught right and when theta becomes pi you know the guy is at point b and let's take the radial distance of point b to be r b corresponding to theta equals to pi the distance is r b and from here we can easily get r b as r naught e to the power v pi by u and for any general r it is going to be r naught e to the power v theta by u and how did i obtain this i just put the limits of theta to be general theta and the limits of r to be general r and i obtain this okay so now as i know r is a function of theta i can actually use this differential equation over here so from here i can say r naught e to the power v theta by u d theta equals u dt okay so now i can again integrate on both sides at t equal to zero the value of theta was zero and we want the time when the value of when a theta of pi radians is covered and after integration this is the value of the time that we obtain okay so now let's move on to the next question okay guys so in this question we have a small disk a that is placed on an inclined plane forming an angle of alpha as shown in the figure it is imparted an initial initial velocity of v naught if the friction coefficient mu is tan alpha and at initial moment phi is pi by 2 so the angle phi from the diagram we can see that is the direction that the instantaneous velocity makes with the x direction which is along the plane so initially phi was 90 degree meaning the particle was projected perpendicular to x basically right so we have to figure out the rate of change of speed and the speed of the disk as a function of phi okay guys so uh, so this is the x direction and the particle at some instant has a velocity of v and it's making an angle of phi with the x direction so in the question they gave an information that mu is tan alpha so where alpha is the angle of the incline just essentially means that uh, mg sin alpha which is the force along x direction equals mu mg 
cos alpha. So again, mg sin alpha is the force in the x direction. In terms of magnitude, this is equal to mu mg cos alpha. So, so if you observe something at this particular instant, the friction force will be opposite to the instantaneous velocity, right? And the magnitude of friction force is mu n, which is mu mg cos alpha. And we know mu mg cos alpha is equal to mg sin alpha. We can, so we can write the friction force as mg sin alpha. And even this will make an angle of phi with the x-axis. And another driving force we have is the mg sin alpha force, which is along the x direction itself, right? The mg cos alpha and the normal will is irrelevant to our discussion because they don't do any useful work here. So first we have to determine the rate of change of speed, which is d by dt of mod v. So the component of acceleration that changes the speed is the tangential acceleration. And tangential, in other words, is the component of acceleration in the direction of the velocity vector. In this case, the component of mg sin alpha along the velocity vector is mg sin alpha cos phi and the friction force mg sin alpha is opposite to v vector anyway so we can write it as minus mg sin alpha so this divided by mass is the tangential acceleration which is also equal to d by dt of mod b so if i take g sin alpha outside i can write it as cos phi minus one so this is the rate of change of the speed of the particle and this matches with option now we have to figure out the speed of the disk. So for that, we can just integrate this expression. So, so we can say d mod v equals g sin alpha times integral of cos phi minus one dt. So now the issue here is that cos phi is a variable as well. So phi also is changing with respect to time. So we cannot just directly integrate this expression. So we need another equation. Okay, and for that, we can actually do a neat trick here. Write the ac velocity acceleration relation along the x direction. So, so in the x direction, the speed is nothing but v cos phi, right? So I can say the rate of change of the speed along the x direction, which is v cos phi is equal to the acceleration along x direction. And that is going to be g sin alpha minus g sin alpha cos phi, right? So this is going to be g sin alpha minus g sin alpha cos phi. So now if you observe something, if I integrate on both sides with respect to time, you can see there is a one minus cos phi integral, which is exactly what we want, right? So this is going to be d of v cos phi g sin alpha times one minus cos phi dt. So, and now I can integrate on both sides. So initially at time t equal to zero. Okay guys, so uh, v cos phi is again the velocity in the x direction, right? As I said earlier, initially the ball was projected perpendicular to the x direction. So the component along the x direction initially was zero. So initially this component was zero and at any general time t, this would be equal to v cos phi. So the left side becomes v cos phi, the right side becomes g sin alpha times integral of zero to t one minus cos phi dt. So now we can integrate this expression. So at time t equal to zero, this is a speed that we are integrating, right? So initially the speed was v naught and at any general time t, we took the speed as v. So the LHS becomes v minus v naught and the RHS, if you observe this thing is just negative of this thing, right? Which means RHS is simply going to be minus v cos phi. And from here after real arranging you get v as v naught divided by 1 plus cos phi so, and that corresponds to option c so that was the solution to this problem so now let's move on to the next question okay guys so this is the last problem of the day and i think this is the best problem as well so in this question we have a uniform straight rod whose mass is m and length is l and it is having small rollers of negligible mass at the end so we have to neglect the mass of these rollers and they are also very small in dimensions okay so the rod is moving on a ho smooth horizontal surface okay so there is no friction with a constant speed of v naught in a gravity free space so this is important we have to ignore the effects of gravity Find the normal reaction at the rear roller, meaning this roller, from the horizontal surface just after the front roller crosses the point B. So the moment the front roller begins to move in this circle, we have to figure out the normal reaction on the rear roller. Okay, so that's the problem. So now let's begin with the analysis. Okay guys, so just before the right roller is about to move into the circular region, uh, its velocity is V0 towards the right. So we know that when, whenever we have a particle that has to move along a circle, it needs to have an acceleration towards the center of the circle, whose magnitude is the speed squared divided by L. And this is what we call the centripetal acceleration. So just, you know, after it enters the point P, it will have some vertical velocity, vertical acceleration of V0 squared by L. If you got the answer for NL as zero, it would be wrong. And then let me explain the reason. So, so initially we know the rod was horizontal, right? And the situation just after, I'm gonna draw it with red color. So let's say this point uh, over here, which is on the right roller, it moved along the curve by some distance, okay? If you observe, the right part of the roller, it, its y coordinate increased by some amount, delta y. And if you observe the point of the rod attached with the left roller, it does not move in the y direction. 
why because it is uh, rigidly attached to the center of the roller right so and the center of the roller's distance from the ground is fixed so this point that is attached to the left roller it won't its vertical height from the ground won't change in other words we can say this point attached to the left roller does not move uh, in the y direction but the thing is if you observe every other point on the rod has some vertical displacement meaning all the other points on the rod actually accelerate in the vertical direction an extension by also we can say that the y acceleration of the center of mass will be non zero and if the ax if there is some acceleration of the center of mass in the y direction then the normal forces cannot be zero so the answer to this question is not zero so now let's determine what the answer is so i'm going to represent the rollers with points and, and after some time what will happen is the right roller it moves some distance to the right let's call it dx and some distance in the vertical direction let's call it dy so the final position of the ball on the roller on the right is over here and the roller on the left we know it is just going to translate in the horizontal direction and as we know the entire rigid body moves in the horizontal direction with the same velocity even this guy's displacement is going to be dx towards the right so this is where the final position of the ball is so now if i join these two this is the triangle that we obtain so in this triangle guys so the center of mass is presented as a distance of l by 2 from this point over here so if i draw a vertical line by similarity of triangles if i if i compare this triangle to this small triangle over here i can see that this vertical height should be dy by 2 why because uh, so at a distance of l the displacement is dy so at a distance of l by 2 the displacement must be dy by 2 now we know the acceleration of the roller on the right it was equal to v naught square by l and it does not have any tangential acceleration so we know the value of d2y by dt square it is v naught square by the center of mass which is present over here its y acceleration is going to be half of d2y by dt square v naught square by 2l and it won't have any horizontal acceleration because there is no horizontal force acting on the system so now let's just say the force acting on the left roller is n1 and the force acting on the right roller is n2 and let's just assume an anti-clockwise angular acceleration alpha for the rod because we can see it is rotating in the anti-clockwise sense right now let's apply tau equal to i alpha but the question is about which point this is an important discussion guys so in some of my previous videos of mechanics i explained that uh, when you apply tau equal to i alpha to make life easy it's always better to choose cm or a non-accelerated point to apply tau equal to i alpha i mean so you can choose cm uh, or you can also choose this point n1 over here uh, why because as i explained earlier the vertical coordinate of this point attached to the left roller it does not change and horizontally it doesn't have any acceleration so this is a non-accelerated point so i am going to choose that left roller point so the torque of n2 about this point is n2 times l n2 multiplied by l is going to be the i about the horizontal axis passing through this point which for a rod it is ml square by 3 times the angular acceleration alpha of the rod so and alpha alpha is the angular acceleration of the rod guys then the acceleration of the center of mass i can write it as alpha multiplied by l by 2 which is also equal to v naught square by 2l so alpha multiplied by l by 2 which is the acceleration of the center which is the vertical acceleration of the center of mass is equal to a y which is equal to v naught square by 2L. Now let's substitute it into a torque equation and we get so uh, but what they asked in the problem was n1 so now we need one more equation and for that we can use f equals to ma y direction so the total upward force is n1 plus n2 and this is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass which is v0 square by 2L. So now if you put n2 here and send it to the other side we can see it is half minus 1 by 3 so which comes out to be 1 by 6 so the answer comes out to be mv0 square divided by 6L so which was option so that was it for this question guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below do like share and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the video and that's it thanks for watching